Hash House and Circle Up. Welcome to On On, the Hash House Harrier podcast for interviews, history, and stories. I'm your host, Ra. Today, we are in Brunei, a very important place in the world for hashing. And we're with a very important hasher, an elegant VIP, we believe is the eldest hasher still hashing. We are with Glamour. Glamour, welcome on the podcast. Thank you. Let's start with your origin story. Can you tell everyone when and where and how did you get to your very first hash? As it is, I was very keen to go into jungle. Then I came to know the men has formed a group for hashing into the jungle. So we, I and another lady friend called Hilda Mulrich and another Chinese lady girl, we approached them. Mm-hmm. So they said, well, they said, I, we did a couple, few runs with the men. And then, then they decided to make ladies run separately. Did some of those male hashers organize it for the women then? Yes. Oh. It's just Bob something. Bob something is the one who did the split us into ladies hash. Mm-hmm. Were you a hiker? Were you a runner? What was it that? No, no. I just uh, love going to the jungle. I we just we used to walk into jungle. And sometimes I go to the stadium and we walk. I, la- I like to walk around the stadiums all the time. A fellow called Robert Tiefel. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The first couple runs, the men said, okay, we'll allow you to go on the hash with the men. Yeah. What did you think? What do you remember about it? We did run and then they were sort of a very good men. They, you know, feel comfortable to run with. They're guiding us how to do because we, uh, how they are doing. See, so... They told us that they lay trails and how the first check is, how is the second check and all that. So we follow them. Yeah. Hmm. Did you drink alcohol? Was there alcohol there? Was there beer at the end? Yeah, but then I don't. You, I yeah, do that like, was. Yeah, I don't like beer. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You need take soft drink. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you finished but, the run when you started with the women and you're yeah. doing the same hashing in the jungle. Was yes. it on trails that were open or did you have to clear new areas? Uh, so sometimes we use the men's trail. Ah. Yes. And if the men's trail is too long, we cut it short. Nice. Yeah. How many women were doing it at the beginning and did it grow over time? The women's hash? We started with about seven, eight of us. Then later on, it became bigger. Lately, it became much smaller. Yeah, how many? Yeah, yeah, these things grow and shrink over time. And yeah, you know, like they come here on a contract three years, two years, and then they go back. They could not get renewed. Sometimes they get renewed. So they they come and go. Local, yeah. we have got about seven, eight Chinese. Mm-hmm. Still, still going on strong. And uh, the rest, you know, Europeans, they come and go. About what year was it that you went on your first hash? 66. November. 1966. Wow. Yeah, November, November 1966. Wow. Um, well, I can tell you that there are many experienced hashers around the world and many people yeah. listen to this podcast and mm-hmm. many of the ones that will hold it, hear this will not. Oh, no, I was born in 1966. There will be many hashers who were not alive when you started yeah. hashing. That's a, <laughs> that's a great flashback. <laughs> I wanted to find out a little bit what it was like with you setting the women as got better. Did you have mismanagement? Did you need organization and and people to run the club? How did you decide who would set the trail every week? We have been running very smoothly every year. We choose new JM and GM and committee members. They come forward and volunteer to do. It has been running very smoothly. It's amazing. From 1966, Mm -hmm. this is the same traditions at all the clubs around the world. Did you know that there were hashes in other parts of the world after you found the hash there? (laughs) Yes. When I went to Bali, I met a lot of uh, hashes from all over the world. (laughs) 
Yeah. I imagine you didn't meet too many who had been hashing as long as you did, but... Uh... Yes, uh, well, I don't know. I met a lot of them when in the Bali, especially, you know, people come from all over the world. Yeah. Um, did you hash with any other clubs? You went to Bali. Did you ha- go to any hash events outside of Brunei? I said I went to Bali. Yeah. I went to Tawau. I went to KK. I had to Labuan. These are all cities in uh, on Borneo. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. What did you call cl- the women's club in Brunei? Hen House Harriet. Hen House Harriers. That's right. And yeah. so did the hen house sometimes have its own runs away from the capital city? Not too far. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's about 30 miles away. Wow. Yeah. What was it like in 1966 in terms of the community and safety? Did other people who weren't hashers have any idea what was going on? Was the hash known in the city? We started with about eight people, eight ladies when we went and then one or two were more senior and when we start laying the run there was always a man hash uh, come along to help us to lay the trail lately then we started the ladies start to lay the trail on their own earlier years we we always have a man hashes to help us to lay the trail apart from just going into the jungle you once you got the committee and all that hash Hash House Harrier Club culture going. What was it about hashing that has made you stay with it for over 50 years? I just like it. (laughs) When you talk to someone, if hashing came up or someone asked you about it, how how would you describe hashing over the years? I said I I just love the jungle. Of course, I miss a lot of uh, runs as I was uh, being in the business. I have to travel. Sure. And then I fall ill a few times. But I, whenever I'm well, I'm there. You yeah. know, whenever I'm well and I'm here in Brunei, I'm there. I and, never like to miss it. And you just had a birthday. Happy birthday. I got about 51 ladies here wow. in my house. Yeah. They enjoyed. They really enjoyed our meal and they're really very happy. Yeah. <laughs> Which number birthday was it? 89. 89. Congratulations. <laughs> I hope to catch up one day. Although you you don't like beer and it's not required as part of hashing. You have soft drinks. Were there other lady hashers on the hen house areas that did have beer or did you guys have just soft drinks? They had beers. They have beers, yeah. Definitely. definitely. The drinking culture is yeah. definitely there. Yeah. At one time, they were very strong. A couple of them are very strong, but now no more. They they are, they will have one or two, and okay, that's it. What other traditions might people recognize from your hash? Did you have a circle? Did you sing songs? We do sometimes. And then sometimes we have uh, jokes. Uh-huh. The hash sheet. Yeah, that when we we many years ago when we don't have mobile we used to have a hash sheet every every week newly print. Some clubs will call that the hash trash. So it was a write up of what happened. And was that mailed out or handed out the next week? How did you distribute? Uh, that? When we go to the hash, you we get the next next week run ready there for you to pick up. And a lot of people were able to go every week. Did you ever have? Anyone get injured or any big accidents yes, on the yes. trail? Do you have any yeah. stories about that? I had a nasty fall and I got four stitches on my forehead, whereas a few others had a, a fracture. <clears throat> but so far, we we don't have animals here that, uh, you know, uh, serious animals here. So it's okay. Sometimes you meet snakes and all that, but th- that's okay. Yeah. yeah this jungle here is very good. Yeah. Not lethal. What's what about that? the weather? Have you got? Were there any stories where an unexpected rain or storm got people in trouble or messed up an event? We have rain, but we just carry on running. But we don't have storms here. Hmm. No storms. You just run in the rain. Is there anyone who comes to mind? You talked about there were some strong drinkers and there's strong runners. Are there any other people that you can name? that people might have met or when they visited or know. Who were some of the 
interesting hashers and characters that you met over the years? If you- One is called Smurf. Yeah? Smurf. Smurf? She's very uh-huh. interesting. Yeah. She was a teacher here yeah, for quite a many years. And then she went back and settled in Scotland. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sure there are many descendants of the hen house harriers that have come in and moved around the world. Yes, there are. There is one now going. She has a boat here. It's called Alison Tartan. They have a boat here and she has been running many years and now they have decided to go home and uh, they, they are still leaving their boat here. So in good time, she will come back and with the husband and she will travel around this area because right now, because of COVID, yeah. this uh, uh, other nearby places is still uh, close with, with the COVID problems. So when the when it's okay, they'll come back and start selling again. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. I have a hash there. I was mm-hmm. there for the 2010 World Interhash. Did you go oh. to that event? No, I didn't, no. 2010, but, you had your heart bypass. Yeah, I had my heart bypass then. Wow, so 12 years ago. And uh, did you fully recover from that? Yes, I then I start running again. <laughs> nice, wow, good for you. <laughs> I, I, because, because we are more senior, we three of us are allowed to go into the jungle 15 mi- minutes earlier. I was up on a very high hill, and then this lady called Anna, when she came up huffing and huffing, and she said, how did you do glamour? How did you do You're up here already? I said, I did it slowly, so I'm up here already. Oh, I'm huffing. Am I? She just sat on the hill there. I never forget. She said, oh, you're wonderful. I said, I, well, I did. I'm still running. Yeah. You, were, you were over 75 years old when that happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I was 76 when I had open heart surgery. Wow. And then after that, I started coming back again. Yeah, perfectly all right. Wow, that's fantastic. Your hash name is Glamour. Glamour, G-L-A-M-O-U-R. And how did you get that name? Actually, my shop, when I opened the shop, I uncle, I asked my uncle, I said, I need a name for my shop. The first thing he said is just put Glamour. I said, Glamour what? He said, just Glamour. So I put the, my shop's name Glamour, which was very successful. Yeah. So just because my shop is Glamour, then the, this lady's name me Glamour. Well, that's a nice name. Yeah. What kind of shop did you have? We started with sports. Mm. Sports equipment. You see? Mm-hmm. I'm very interested in dressmaking. Uh-huh. Even the whole European ladies in Brunei was in my was my customers. Right. So I part of my shop I turned into dressmaking. I had seven girls to sew for me. I was cutting dresses. Wow. Were you making fashion dresses or fashion local, dresses? Local, uh, local? No, 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 no local. I don't like local because they're all the same design. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Were you a designer? Also? Well, I design also and I uh, advise her also with the fabric. Mm. If they bring a fabric and they choose a wrong pattern, I said, no, this is not the right pattern for this material. So they agree with me. I I have simplicity. I have work patterns, big, big books, and then they choose from there and I make their dresses. Uh, did you retire from running Glamour? Well, I'm more or less retired now because I had two strokes, so I can't run now. Yeah. I, actually, I, I stopped, but the ladies keep on saying, no, even you cannot run, you just come. So sure. I do. I to go, yeah. So <laughs> I walk around. Yeah, I walk around. And the shop Glamour is still open, is it? Not in ma- ma- big way, but my son refused to close it. He said, no, mommy, <laughs> I, I want to keep it. So he kept it. Now he, he's selling trophies. Uh-huh. Um, engraving and in, in, in doing engraving and selling trophy. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? I when and how this worked. There were three special senior hashers who would go early on trail. How did that work? Not a senior. Some of them are young. Uh, lately, one just who has come here for one year. They they come along with one senior one to go go and lay the trail. Mm-hmm. 
three were allowed to go in 15 minutes earlier. No, Who that was they? me. Uh, me and the one is Veronica Duchess and the other one was gone already. Hilda, Hilda. Mm. Uh-huh. Three of them. Um, and so the three of you would take off and 15 minutes later, the rest of the pack would join the trail. Yes. Mm. <laughs> that was kind of a uh, privilege of being yeah. long-term hashers. Is that what that was? No, because we were more elderly, so a bit slow. So they allow us to go 15 minutes earlier. Nice. So instead of getting left behind. Yeah, instead yeah. of getting left behind, you know. Yeah, well, I'm not sure. It's, that's not always the case of an age thing, but that's a, that's a nice <laughs> a nice feature to have. But then we never leave them behind. They're always in a group. Even the last one is never alone. Uh-huh. They're always two or three together, you know. Even <laughs> they're, they're slow. I mean, some of them are slow. The faster one will stay back accompanying them. That's a nice community. They take torches along. Uh-huh. Can we talk a little bit about some of the logistics of it? Like, what was the trail marked in and what time of day and what day of week? Let's just get the details. Well, our run was originally on Monday. Right. And then I had a business in 60 miles away. In that town, the shop closed on Tuesday. And I couldn't join. I miss a lot of run. Then one day I came and I request them if you can have the the run on Tuesday. They agreed. So I came home on Monday night and I run on Tuesday and I go back on Wednesday. <laughs> so that has been happening. That's why the run is up till today still on Tuesdays. That was in the 70s. Yeah, in the 70s. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a pretty fundamental change of the club and uh, arranging your life so that you could do the hash. Yeah. What was the trails marked? Was this shredded paper? I don't remember what they... Yeah, some st- strips of papers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, white strips of papers. The second check, maybe yellow, right. you know? Yeah. yeah. In general... Uh, the people would put the trail markings the same day or the day before, or how was it? Uh, they go, they go for uh, checking the trail. Like on a Sunday, they will go and check out the area. Mm-hmm. And my, on Tuesday, they go about two o'clock in there to lay the trail. Right. And we go in at five fifteen. Right, so they know the trail's marked. Great. Yeah, yeah. So we have two check up or three checks. So the trail will disappear and then we lay somewhere else. So when they reach the end there, they will say uh, checking. They call for checking. So they will split away. And then whoever found it, they will say on, 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 on. The gang will carry on. So the one who is finding checking, they will pick up the paper, then they lay along. So the one ah. who is far behind will follow. No need to, for them to start checking, you know. Right. Nice. It's wonderful to talk to you and hear this. I'm, I started hashing in 1985. Uh-huh. And just to think that all these same traditions were happening in the jungle with people for more decades. It's always nice mm-hmm. to hear that the same group and our same tribe or culture yeah. was alive. And it would look the same if we took a time machine back in 1966. Oh, Any of us would you. show up and it would be the same. Did you have men, other men from outside who visited? Were they allowed to go on your trail? Uh, no. Oh. If we, we, we have a man, he'll get a hash it, you see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They had to suffer, right? Yeah, cold yeah. ice. Yeah, cold ice. Cold oh. ice on, on him. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, okay. That's another tradition that is in a lot of places, the icing. When you started with the hash committees and mismanagement positions, when did you get involved in various roles over the years? Yes, yeah. yes. Many, many committee positions. Mm, many. I've been um, cashier. I've been grandmistress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Assistant, what is it? GM. GM. Uh, and did you like telling jokes? Did you like being part of the entertainment? Yes, yes we have some. Sometimes we had nasty jokes. 
<laughs> when, when, when I was growing up, I remember that I, I used to love looking for her hash sheets because there were very raunchy jokes in there. <laughs> ah, yeah. Can we talk about a couple things about that you mentioned the hash cash, the treasury, and the t shirts? Over time, did it change? How did you pay? Did you pay every time, every run, every year? How did you work the finances? Sixty dollars for one year. No, oh, no, six months, I think. Mm-hmm. Something like that. I can't really remember. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah Sometimes like ten dollars a, a, a month, hundred and twenty dollars. When when he started. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know how much exactly because. After after thousand year uh, run, uh, run, we are free. You see, oh, we don't yeah. have to. Be. Are there other hashers there who have done a thousand runs apart from you? Three of them now. Uh huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what about hash T-shirts? Do you remember when you started making them and you had your glamour shop? Where you did you get involved in designing any of the hash T-shirts? Did you guys um, have them? Well, I did did couple of design when I support the T-shirts as a sponsor. I sponsor the T-shirts. Then some of them um, by the by the manufacturer, you know, mm-hmm. or whoever the printers, uh, the printers, printers and whoever. Um, uh, support the t-shirts they they have their own designs right have you kept any from the old days what's the oldest what's the oldest t-shirt you have i got tons of we didn't get used to have t-shirts in the olden days only uh, lately we start having t-shirts in 1982 mm-hmm. 87, 88, then only we start having t shirts Earlier, no. So what's your oldest t-shirt? 1982. 1982. Uh, <laughs> so you had the hash sheet to tell the raunchy story of what happened and make the jokes. Did they keep records? Do you have any idea how many hash trails you have been on yourself? You mean that I laid? No, that you actually either laid or went on. Right now, 1,386 run right now. Well, you know exactly how many. You've been on hash runs with the men and other clubs around the area too. Yeah, once a year we had joined run with the men, mm-hmm. Hans and, and Harriet. Yeah. Did the men set the run? Did sometimes the women set the run? Was that- uh, well, lately I don't go for the run, but the men are the one who sets the run. And what did the hens do after the trail? After you had a drink? Get together and then they sit, had, had their drinks and all that and then sat down and have bites and all that. And after that, they call to say, asking how about the run today? And they will say, uh, sometimes people say too long. Some of the people say too <laughs> short. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, um, they will ask who found the first check, uh-huh. then who found the second check, who found the third check, and then they, we have horns. The front horn. Someone will volunteer to take the front horn. Someone will take volunteer to take the second horn, last horn. Uh-huh. So they have to thank uh-huh. them for taking the horns. So all that, and after that, they'll say, on, on. So we have some something to eat. Okay. Did you eat right at the run site where you had the hash, or did you go to a restaurant? No, at the hash. Okay. Oh, after that, whoever led the trail, he, she will invite to the house. Ah. Were there any memorable trails or special moments or special places that you, you liked hashing? More yeah, than others, there is a place called uh, Diplo site, mm-hmm. so very nice place. And we have few very f- nice trails there, and oh we God. really enjoyed that area. But now it's not much anymore because all the diplomatic commissioners has uh, built their residence and the offices there, so we can't go there anymore. No longer a jungle, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the uh, jungle is behind, but the road is not allowed for us to go in. Huh? Wow. 
over 56 years of uh, being from the very start, mm -hmm. did the traditions change and how did the, the hen house harriers change apart from the numbers? Is it the same as it was at the beginning or it as the culture? It's more or less the same. Yeah, and there is changes a bit here and there, very minor sort of thing, you know, but other than that, it went on as it is. Obviously, you've made lots of friends through the hashing. Yes. Did, did the hens do things together away from the hash, or did you see them just a week, once a week with your busy life? Those are, are here. We see them once a week, but I have few that I they have gone many years. I keep contact with them. I call them from time to time. Two of them, whenever they come to Brunei, they stay in my house. Nice. They go for the hash one or two hangers and then they left. Yeah, another one coming soon to see, to be here because she is going to Hong Kong. So she's coming to Brunei, stay, have a couple of hashes, then she'll go to Hong Kong to see the doctor. Nice. Hashing's obviously been a part of your life for, for yeah. 56 years now. Can you imagine, would your life be different if you had never found the hash house harriers? Well, well, if I didn't find, maybe I do something else. Yeah. But as it is, I'm very active person because I run a business. I started a business with nothing, with one sewing machine, you know. My husband came and told me he, he lost his job and he was trying to look for another one. I said, don't worry, I've saved some money. You, you go to Singapore, you buy this disease for me, we carry on. And he went and bought something, uh, some sports equipment. And then he bought some textile for me. Oh, we went on. Then we, we moved into bigger premises. And then we went on and we, we, we did very well over the years. Yeah. Well, it's kind of an amazing story. Yeah. And then after that, he split into carpet. So he, he, he runs a carpet shop separately. And now we had the biggest carpet shop in Brunei. <laughs> Oh, and what was that one called? Uh, Mohan Carpet Palace. Uh huh. Okay. The son's name, Mohan Carpet Palace. Mm. Yeah. Once the business was running and was obviously going to succeed, how much did you enjoy running a business? Oh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I can go to shop in the morning, seven o'clock, and come home even during. Uh, this Malay festival, we close shop sometimes 10 o'clock, sometimes 11 o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At, yeah. And wow. next morning, 8 o'clock, I'm, I'm already in the shop. Of course, the pandemic has affected so many hashes and made us pause or stop and, and been a thing. But the, the hash will come back. What do you think the future of hashing? Do you think it will last forever? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, the way it's going, definitely. And we have got few Chinese lady who will definitely run and they are taking care of the cash money, the one in uh, in the bank, three local ladies are signing it so the bank account is quite safe. Right. Uh, yeah, the men's hash, one of the men was doing it and he walked away with $14,000. Yeah, An infamous event. Yeah. For you, what yeah. kind of person or what about a person would make you, if you met someone, said, oh, you would like the hash? Did you tell everyone you met about the hash or were you a little bit picky to say, oh, this is the kind of person that might like the hash? Oh, well, we try to welcome as many as possible. Whoever came earlier, we welcome them. We sing a song for them and then in the end we'll say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm. So they feel they're, they're new and they feel they are, she has been welcome into the hash group, you see. Mm -hmm. You've got 1,300 hash trails with the hands. Mm -hmm. Did you set a lot of trails at the beginning? And what, yes. what, yeah, what was a trail I, like when you set a trail? What was your approach? Uh, you mean the length? Well, what did you think about and what did you try to do when you made a trail? Oh, when we, I mean, we go in at three ladies, you know, two or three ladies. Mm -hmm. We normally, we have those uh, trail already been used. We just follow that and then we cut into different part of the jungle. And we go, we go in there and then after like a V shape and then we go back to the original trail again. Mm -hmm. Just uh, detours. Yeah, just detours. 
Yeah. We eventually, we come back to the same trail again. We do that kind of thing. Back when you were really first starting and discovering the places, how long would the trail last or how far was it? Three kilo, four kilo, five kilos. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you would start before sunset and it would get dark on trail. Is that how it worked? Or would you finish finish running before dark? Sometimes. (laughs) <laughs> oh, she like got lost? Yeah, she got lost. She went off the trail. She thought this is okay. She thought she cut off, she cut cut short and then she got lost. And she deep down the hill, she called, but nobody can hear. And uh, we tried till 10 o'clock. We waited. She didn't come. So, but she's a strong lady. She's good hasher. So she sat on a, on a uh, drop tree, you know, big drop tree. She sat on it. And then she pulled her shirt, long sleeve shirt over. And then she has a towel over her shoulder that she cover her legs. So she sat the whole night until seven o'clock in the morning. Wow. And then she could walk out. She can't because she, she's totally lost and she didn't have a torch. Did you put her on the ice the next week for that? Uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hash namings, were you part of giving other people their hash names over the years? Yeah, we choose together, you know, the committee choose together. And was there any minimum? When would someone get a hash name? When they come, they will have three runs. Uh-huh. After the three runs, they, they are sure they want to join. Then they join and we announce we have a, a new runner. After she is joining, then next week we get together, get a name for her. Look what she see what she looks like and what she is keen, what is she doing, and we put a name on her. Yeah, nice. If someone never heard of the Hash House Harriers mm-hmm. and said, I heard it's like a cult or a club, what is it like? How do you describe the personality of hashing? It's not something that you go into a club and sit down and drink, we told them. And then we said we get together in a in a jungle somewhere. And then we normally have a tent there. If it's uh, the weather no good, we call for a tent man to fix a tent there with chairs and a table. And uh, we all get, a, get, get together there. We all drive there, park the car and get under the tent. And then we start running. And then we told them we start how we start and how we end and we have drinks there. So if we decided to just have a bite there, whoever run laid the run, they will bring some bites and then we enjoy it there only. Now, it's great to hear. Certainly a lot of people have met you over the years. I don't think we have ever met. There was a big celebration when there was a photograph of your birthday party put on Facebook last week. Yeah. I was caught one day uh, laying a trail. I told this uh, man called Malcolm Smithson, and he came to lay a trail with me during that time. Men used to come very many years ago. And Mm -hmm. I told him, I said, we cannot go here because the coming in trail will catch us. He said, no, no, they're different. I said, no, he he didn't agree with me. So I follow him and we got caught. (laughs) Uh, laying a trail so we got cold water <laughs> ah that's the penalty for uh yeah okay. nice. mm. one time we went heavy rain and then the water was until waistline i have to cross and then i can see a snake going across <laughs> front and back so many snakes we and just no- walk across and then we we come to a higher area we we went through all this kind of thing you know? Sure. But now it is mostly hilly, hilly area. We go to the hilly area. Not so many snakes come out when it's flooded there. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Has there been misunderstandings or have you had to work with the local government or police for where you go? Oh, no. no, no. No, no problems? No problem. Each week we informed them and they said, okay. Now, only lately, only they allowed us to continue running because all these years, because of COVID, we not we are not allowed to go. Right. So we just did did walking around our own area. Only. You see what I I we have to do like around my area. I walk and then I send a photo to the committee that I did my run. Ah, so you can get that credit. My run, is, my run is counted. You know. Right. We believe that you are the eldest active Harriet in the world. Is that right? Yeah. 
So what? Uh, yeah, I, I was confirmed that. <laughs> Congratulations. I talked to, I think we have the eldest male is might be a Canadian. I talked to someone now who's 93. Wow. There was an Australian man who died after Fiji and Rahash, who was about almost 99. Wow. Oh, wow. Maybe. Wow. There's something to aspire to. Yeah. So you're still a youngster, but we'll, you'll. Re- <laughs> <laughs> Your daughter is with us, and she is not a hasher. And was your husband a hasher with the men's no, hash? Or is no, just, you're no. the only hasher in the family? Yes, in the family, yes, I'm the only one. Yeah, I think it's mom's thing, you know. Yeah. It's something that we associate with her. We, we enjoy it vicariously through her. <laughs> well, I can tell you, it's a delight to talk with you. I very appreciative of you taking the time to tell the stories and share your stories and ideas. You're an inspiration to men and women hashers around the world when they heard your story and your your recent celebration. Talking to you and just getting to know you now, you're the quintessential hash spirit and hash personality, and it's it's great to meet you. Thank you. I do want to ask you one final question. Is the GM always right? GM, uh, sometimes it's not right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How about when? How about when you are GM? Well, that time is many years ago. It's a different, different sort of people, you know. Yeah. They agree because I always do things according to what they like. You know, I don't put up my nose and say no, cannot do this, no, cannot do that, no. We we want to we I we try to make this atmosphere happy. You know, if there is anything misunderstanding, just forget and forgive, you know. No need to pick up on people. I always tell them no, if there's any misunderstanding, just forget it. Don't don't pick it up. It's okay. Especially like these people who are coming on contract. They are here for two, three years and then they are gone already. What for you want to create any problem here, make people unhappy and they don't want to remember you. If you have been good here, people remember you and even you are gone for 10 years. That's a wonderful attitude. I think every hash club in the world would be lucky to have you. And that's why the hash lasted for 56 years and is going strong. Yeah. Or attitude like that. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, we wanted to create a happy group, you know. On, on. On, on, yes, on, on, heels. What a great hashing personality. Glamour from Brunei Hen Hash House Harriers. Hashing since 1966. 89 years young, the eldest active Harriet in the world. This is the On, On Podcast. Hash your stories, hash your voices, hash your history. New episodes every week. Till next time, On, On, this is Ra. To close the circle, here's the hash anthem sung by Mother Hash. Swing low, swing chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, swing chariot,